This evening we continue our journey through Lent and we are looking at the question and answering the question through God's Word of who is Jesus. Because the Apostle John teaches us in his letters that if you get Jesus right, you you get everything else that matters for eternal life right. If you get Jesus wrong, it doesn't matter what else you think or know. That Jesus is what matters and the the point of Lent is to lead us to Jesus, to show us who He is as our Savior, as our King, as our Redeemer, as our Rescuer. And this evening we are looking at the picture of Jesus, that Jesus is our friend, that Jesus is a friend of sinners. That no matter what we have done wrong, no matter what mistakes we have made, no matter what regrets we have, that Jesus enters our lives as our friend, not to condemn us and destroy us and judge us, but in order to love us, forgive us, and redeem us. And so this evening we begin our worship of celebrating the good news that Jesus is a friend of sinners like you and me with our opening response and receiving that grace of forgiveness of Jesus through confession and absolution. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Let us then confess our sin in the presence of God. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in Him we are forgiven. We rest now in His peace and rise in the morning to serve Him. Amen. When I made the transition from elementary school to middle school, I also made a transition from a private Lutheran school that I'd always been a part of and always known and where all my friends throughout all the years were, to a public school with thousands of students versus just a few hundred, and with no friends, nobody that I knew. Everybody was a perfect stranger. And while all this can be nerve-wracking for a student, for a kid. The worst part of the day was when it came time to go to lunch. Because I didn't know anybody. I was walking into a room filled with more students, more kids than I had ever seen in my whole life in one place. And I didn't know a single person. And so I had all of that nervousness, all of that fear, all of that insecurity of what are people going to think of me? Are they going to want me to sit with them? Are they going to want to get to know me? Will they be my friend or will they be against me? Will they make fun of me? Will they reject me? And while we can probably all relate on some level to that feeling of being in school, Transitioning from one grade to the next or one class to the next and and having to meet new people and make new friends and all that fear and anxiety that can kind of build up in the pit of your stomach of what are people going to think of me? Are they going to accept me? Are they going to love me? Are they going to be kind to me? Will they be my friend? Or are they going to reject me? Are they going to push me away? One of the things that happens in life is that feeling never totally goes away. Right? Even as you get older and, and move on and start new careers, or maybe you move to a new city or you move to a new neighborhood, and all of these transitions can always bring up these feelings again in us, right? 
Are these new people in my life going to accept me? Are they going to like me? Are they going to be my friend? Or, or I have some insecurities and fears of words. Maybe they're going to not like me or reject me. As we go through Lent, we're asking the question of who is Jesus? One of the things that can happen is we, we take the way we interact with people and then we put that same kind of feeling, that same kind of fear on Jesus. So the question can very quickly become about Jesus. What does He think of me? Is He going to love me? Is He going to accept me? Will He be my friend? Or will He reject me? Will He push me to the side? Will He ignore me? What does Jesus think of me? When Jesus sees you, what does He think? How does He respond? That's the question we want to answer tonight as we look at an incredibly famous story in the Gospel of Luke. It's the story of a tax collector named Zacchaeus. And the context of the story is that Jesus is nearing the end of His earthly ministry. He's getting closer and closer to what we we call Palm Sunday. He's getting closer and closer to Good Friday and Easter. He's on a mission to get to the city of Jerusalem. So all of these things can happen on our behalf. So the story of redemption can unfold for us. So if you're Jesus, you're pretty busy. You've got a lot on your mind. You've got a lot going on. Have you ever noticed that one of the distinguishing traits of a good friend is that they will put other things on hold for you. They will make you a priority with their time and in their schedule. So Zacchaeus sees Jesus coming. He sees this crowd following him. And in Luke chapter 19 it says this, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And I this is a love this little detail, right? We, we sometimes le- read over the little details and skip them, but this is an important one. Jesus is passing through. And he's got his priority. He's got his timetable. He's got his mission that he's on of. I've got to get to Jerusalem. And he's passing through. His intention is to pass through. He, his intention is not, let's stop Let's talk to the crowd. The crowd is following him and he's talking to them along the way. But Jesus has a purpose and a mission and it's to get through Jericho and to Jerusalem. And yet this is what happens. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Now here's an important detail. Zacchaeus is not just a tax collector, he's a chief tax collector. He oversees all the other tax collectors. And in their culture, in their day, the tax collectors were some of the most hated people in their society. They were viewed as some of the worst idolaters and sinners in their society because the tax collector betrayed the Jewish people, betrayed their own people in order to serve Rome and to tax the people and to collect the taxes and send it to Rome, to send it to Caesar. And the Romans didn't care how much you tax an area or how much you tax somebody as long as the bare minimum was sent to Rome. But if you wanted to lie and say someone owed more than that, then you could keep that extra for yourself. And so there was a lot of greed and a lot of deceit involved in this, And so the people viewed the tax collectors as some of the worst sinners in their day because they said, you're betraying your people, you're betraying God Himself, and you're supporting these people that worship other gods. And Zacchaeus is not just an ordinary tax collector, he's a chief tax collector. And Jesus is trying to pass by to get through the city and get to Jerusalem. He's got things to get done. And Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. 
He's heard about Jesus. He hears the crowd. He sees what's happening. And he says, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to know who is this Jesus. In verse 3, he wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way. So this is part of the story and part of the song that you might know. Okay, Zacchaeus, he can't see past the crowd. He's too short, so he climbs up in the tree. Here's the problem. It's not that Zacchaeus is short and can't see over the crowd. It's that everybody hates Zacchaeus. Nobody is his friend. Nobody wants him around. So instead of welcoming him into the crowd, welcoming him to see Jesus marching through, they block him off, they reject him, so he has no choice but to climb up into the tree to see over the crowd. Because of his life, because of his choices, because of his sins, Zacchaeus has been told, you're not welcome here. We're not your friends. But he is determined to see who Jesus is. So he climbs up in the tree and he looks at Jesus. In verse 5, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must Stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. I love that Jesus says, I must stay in your house today. He doesn't wait for Zacchaeus to invite him over. Jesus invites himself over and says, This is so important to me. Zacchaeus, you are so important to me. I must stay at your house today. The other thing that blows me away with the love that Jesus shows, the kindness that Jesus shows to Zacchaeus, is that the story begins with Jesus wanting to pass through this city. His journey is headed to Jerusalem. His journey is headed to the cross and resurrection. He's got very important things to do. And then Jesus sees Zacchaeus, sees a sinner in need of grace and kindness. He says, I'm done passing through. I'm stopping everything. And I must stay tonight at your house, Zacchaeus. See, if you've ever felt like Zacchaeus and said, I've, I've got some regrets. I've got some mistakes that I'm not proud of. I've hurt people. I've wounded people. I've never been great at apologizing. And you find yourself lonely or fearful. of What will people think when they get to know me? What will people think when they get to see the real me? Perhaps you're wondering like Zacchaeus, what will Jesus think of me when he sees me? How will Jesus respond to me in my sin and in my mistakes and in my shortcomings and in my brokenness? Will He reject me like the crowd? Or will He come into my life with kindness and friendship and love? See, the beauty of this story is that Jesus makes Zacchaeus the sinner. He makes you the priority. Yes, I have this purpose and I've got these things I need to get done and I'm trying to pass through the city, but now I'm going to stop. See, Zacchaeus is not an interruption in the schedule and the timing of Jesus. Zacchaeus is a priority in the schedule of Jesus. See, Jesus cares and loves the sinner. He loves you so much that you are not in interruption to him. That when you come like Zacchaeus and maybe you've got a few fears and worries because you've done some things you're not proud of and, and you've got some sin and regret that you're carrying around and you're wondering, what will Jesus do to me? 
He's not going to be off put by that. He's not going to act like the crowd and block you and keep you at an arm's distance. He's going to make you a priority. You are not an interruption to His work of forgiveness and redemption. The sinner, Zacchaeus, you and me, were the whole purpose of His coming and His work of redemption. And then there's a response of the crowd. Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus. Jesus goes to his home. And all the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So nobody likes that Jesus loves Zacchaeus. Nobody likes that Jesus is a friend of of sinners, except, of course, Zacchaeus, except, of course, all the sinners. So we have two ways we can respond to Jesus being a friend of sinners. One is we can act like the crowd. We can try to block people. We can try to keep them away and say, whoa, 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 you're You're way worse than me. You need to fix a few things and at least become as good as me before you can come to Jesus. Or, we can respond like Zacchaeus. We can respond like the sinners that we are and say, I I need to see Jesus. And we can rejoice That in Jesus we have a friend who welcomes us and loves us, who makes us a priority on His schedule, who makes us a priority in His plan of redemption and forgiveness and grace. We can rejoice that Jesus wants to be a part of our lives. That He says to Zacchaeus, He says to you and me, I must come to your house today. And then Zacchaeus responds to this kindness shown to him by Jesus. This kindness, this friendship that changes lives. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So Jesus shows this incredible kindness to Zacchaeus. And it is the the kindness, it is the grace, it is the compassion and the love and the friendship of Jesus that changes Zacchaeus' whole life. Because now Zacchaeus is no longer trapped in guilt and shame. He's no longer trapped in his addiction to greed and wealth. He has been transformed by the love of Jesus and he's essentially saying, I repent I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm not going to treat people that way anymore. So often we are looking for all the ways that our lives could change. We're hoping for their lives to change. And unfortunately, we think the way that we need to change ourselves or the way that we need to change others is to act like the crowd. To, to tell people you need to stay at a distance until you are better. You can't come to Jesus until this has been taken care of. And yet it was in the middle of Zacchaeus' greed, in the middle of his sin and selfishness, that Jesus looked at him and says, Today I'm going to have a meal with you. Today I'm coming to your house. See, it's the kindness of Jesus that changes our lives. When we know and we see Jesus as a friend who loves us, who has come to seek and to save us, 
it changes and transforms our hearts and lives. And it also changes, like it did with Zacchaeus, the way we treat others. How we speak to them, how we interact with them, and how we present Jesus to them. That we get the opportunity to take this good news that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came for sinners like me, that sinners like you and me are a priority to Him. That He has come to be the friend of sinners. That when we understand that this is who Jesus is, we are now set up to share a wonderful and beautiful picture of who Jesus is with the rest of the world. In his letter of Romans, the Apostle Paul reminds the church, it is the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the kindness of Jesus that changed Zacchaeus' his whole life. And it's the kindness and the goodness of Jesus being a friend of sinners that changes my life and your life and everyone's life. Because then when we ask the question of who is Jesus, we have an answer. He is a friend of sinners, meaning He is a friend for you and me, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we have done and what we've gotten wrong in life. And just like Zacchaeus, He comes into our lives and says, Today, salvation is here for you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you are a friend of sinners. That no matter what brokenness we have, no matter what sins we are struggling with and fighting against, that you do not reject us, but instead you welcome us. Instead, you come into our lives and say, I must be here today. And that when you come into our lives, you bring salvation for us and that you change us completely. We give thanks for your kindness and your friendship. In your name we pray. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.